Gamer subs to you by Brought. Welcome to the last of United States. The game opens to a young girl named Sarah, and she's sleeping on the couch in her living room. And we hear the door open. It creaks in. There is her father, Joel. Joel? Now, Joel is talking on the phone, and he's having a disagreement with his brother, Tommy. Listen to me. He is the contractor. He's the contractor, okay? I can't lose this job. This job means everything to me. Way more than even my stupid daughter. Listen to him. I'll call you back. I think she's listening. Then, Joel turns on the living room light. There is Sarah, sitting up. Ah, I've been waiting for you, Joel. What are you still doing up? It's late. Oh, God, what time is it? It's way past your bedtime. But there's still time. Look, ten minutes before your birthday ends. She then whips out a box from underneath the table next to the couch. Here you go, Dad. Inside the box is a watch. Where did you get the money for this? Drugs. I sell hardcore drugs. Sarah falls asleep on the couch, and then her dad picks her up and puts her into bed. And she's put to sleep. Ring, ring. Very loudly. She picks up the phone. It's Tommy, and there's some sort of emergency happening. Uncle Tommy, what time is it? I need to talk to your dad now. There's something... She's like, huh? What's going on? And she's all very confused and sleepy. So she gets out of bed and she starts wandering around. Where is dad? So she starts wandering around the house. She goes to the bathroom. Ah, a newspaper. Admission spikes at area hospital. Mysterious infection. So Sarah walks into her dad's bedroom where there is a television on. We've received reports that victims afflicted with the infection show it's signs nearby. of increased aggression. And Let's move everybody out of here now. There's a gas leak. Hey, there seems to be some commotion here. coming from... Get the hell out of here! Run. What was that? So, Sarah starts getting spooked, and she calls out for her dad. dad. Then she goes into the kitchen, and there's a phone on the counter. And she sees eight missed calls from Tommy. Boy, is he clingy. Tommy says, where the hell are you? That's it, I'm coming over right now. And we can see that it is 2 a.m. So, Sarah continues on moving around the house and goes into the office. Joel rushes in from outside <laughs> through a sliding door. Jimmy comes running right at him. It was self-defense, I swear. And Joel starts firing into Jimmy wildly. Bang, 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 bang. It's just you and me now, kid. We are the last of us. Okay, what do I do now? Come on, here comes Tommy. Let's get in the car and drive away. So Sarah hops in the car. Tommy and Joel also jump in the front and then they start speeding away. They're driving a thousand miles an hour. They hit a sudden traffic jam. Someone gets out of their car and shouts, what the hell is going on? He's suddenly attacked by an infected person. Tommy then suddenly turns the car around. We gotta find another way out of here. So they're slowly finding another route when suddenly a car team bones them. And they all pass out. Sarah wakes up first and shakes Joel awake. Daddy? Hey. Hey. Joel kicks out the windscreen of the car. He gets out of the vehicle and then <gasps> suddenly he is attacked by a zombie. Joel struggles with the infected until Tommy shows up with a brick. <laughs> and he cracks him over the back of the head. Lucky I always keep this brick on me, huh, Joel? Joel then turns around and says, ah, come on, Sarah. But Sarah says, my leg hurts. So he picks Sarah up. The three begin running through the streets, looking for safety. And as they run, there are explosions and car crashes, and it's very cool. And there's infected everywhere. It's very cool. But they turn left into an alleyway, and they get into a bar. Tommy shuts the door behind him, and he holds it closed. Come on, Joe, you gotta get to the highway. Leave me behind. Okay. So Joel begins running up a dirt road. He's going towards the highway. Fuck, boy. He's running up the highway with the infected hot on his tail. Uh-oh. They're about to catch up when suddenly... <laughs> the infected are shot by a soldier man. We'll get you out of here, kid. And your dad, too. Says the man from the army. Hey, hold on. Let me just radio into my commander. One moment. A couple of civilians on the outer perimeter, please advise. The commander on the other end says, Breaker, breaker, this is Kiwis Harvey, 10-4, hidden the old dirt trail. I should kill them? I should kill- But sir, there's a little girl. Pigs in the pen and we're a hole in ass. And then the soldier points his gun at Joel and Sarah. Don't do it. Nothing personal, kid. <laughs> The soldier goes, I didn't kill them. Let me walk over there and continue firing bullets. Joel says, no, please don't. But just before the soldier is able to pull the trigger, Tommy shows up. 
And he mows the soldier down with his gun. But uh oh, it seems as though Sarah might be wounded. No, Sarah, don't die. Do I really have to be the first to go? No, Sarah, you were supposed to be one of the last of us. This is what I get for selling hardcore drugs. Written by Neil Druckmann. Chapter 2, dude. Now we open to 20 years later, and Joel is awoken because he hears someone at the door. Huh? Wait a minute, he's in the Seinfeld apartment. <laughs> Look at it. Look, yeah, this, actually. <laughs> there's the kitchen, and uh-oh, Elaine's about to come right through the front door. I'll tell you, Jerry, he just wasn't sponge-worthy. I stopped for some juji fruits. <laughs> Well, actually, her name's Tess. She enters the apartment and she asks how Joel's morning was. How was your morning? Good. I've been thinking about my dead daughter. Want one? No. No, I don't. I'd rather drink Gamer Subs. Ad time. Welcome back to the Home Shopping Network. We have an incredible new product. Gamer Subs is a delicious powder that you put in water to make it drinkable. You put the powder in the water. Shaker, shaker, shaker. And you've got some delicious berry blast, Sharon. Listen, they don't even need you to buy anything. They want to give away thousands of free samples. What's the catch? There is no catch. So go to the website, put in your name and address, and that's it. And they will send you free samples of GamerSup. You can use a fake name. This isn't even for market research. They just think they're going to guilt trip you into actually buying a product instead of just getting free stuff, right? But you don't need to do that. Just get the free stuff. And you know what? They're even going to throw in a free sticker. Oh! Which I designed very carefully. Who doesn't like being mailed a bunch of loose powder in an envelope? 35,000 reviews. They even got the famous Hacker Anonymous. Gamer Subs comes in a wide variety of flavors. There are caffeinated flavors. There are uncaffeinated flavors. Have we got the new fluoride flush flavor? Have they got the new polyvinyl chloride flavor? For some reason, that shipment's still in transit in Ohio. You can consume as much as you want a day. Nine out of ten doctors agree that the iced tea flavor is the best one. It's all the health stuff you need for your mind and body. Do you have a body? Well, you need to put stuff in it. It's got a whole bunch of new tropic vitamins, which are way better than the old tropic vitamins. It says sugar-free. That's so generous of them to give you the sugar for free. I tell you what, Sandra, this is controversial, but I like Game of Subs. Anyway, that's it. That's the whole ad. Go to the thing and get a bunch of bloody free samples. Why not? Ad over. Anyway, so Joel's talking to Elaine and he's asking her, where have you been? I've been in the West End District because, you know, we had a drop to make. Hold on a minute. You got bruises and stuff on your face. Did something go wrong with the deal? Look, these bruises are swelling and gross. I was on my way back here and I got jumped by these two assholes, all right? Who are these rough and tumble sorts? They were a couple of nobodies. They don't matter. What matters is that Robert fucking sent them. Our Robert. I'm going to kill him and he's going to be deader than my daughter. And I know where he's mm. hiding. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go on a mission to avenge Tessa's face and kill Robert. Well, we better hurry up then. <laughs> So Joel and Tess make their way to the quarantine zone and they, they make it to a checkpoint and they go, I think you'll find everything's in order. All right, let's move on through. Thanks. They are permitted through, but just as they are walking through, explosion. Oh my God, it's some sort of terrorist attack. So the gate's shut right in front of them and the guards are screaming and there's, you know, there's gunfire all over the place. It turns out what's happening is the fireflies are attacking them. You'll find out about them later. Joel and Tess quickly run away. They go into an apartment building and in the apartment is a hole in the wall, which is a new passageway. So he hops into the hole. Then all of a sudden, Elaine goes, Hold on a minute, Joel. Look, the air is kind of spicy. There's spores over there. You gotta put your mask on. All right, you probably already know, but instead of standard zombies, they're doing a fungus thing. So there's these cordyceps, and cordyceps is a fungus, and so there are spores, and if you breathe them in, you turn into one of these zombies. If you get bitten by one of the zombies, you turn into a zombies as well. Anyway, so Joel is going through the spores when suddenly... Watch it, watch it. Stop me. My mask broke. Joel starts firing wildly at the man. Joel fights a bunch of the zombies. Now, they enter the quarantine zone. Tess and Joel march right through the area and they get to Robert's office. Joel opens the door and Robert just opens fire immediately. Back, get the fuck back! But he runs out of ammo. Get 
Go fuck yourself! There's a running sequence, and it's a lot like Uncharted. He's closing doors behind him, and you're running, you're running, you're chasing, you have to get over a wheelie bin, run through a old window, and at that point, ah, there he is, trapped. So, they are interrogating Robert. And they're saying, Who has our guns? So, Robert says, It's the fireflies. I hold the fireflies. What? They're basically all dead. We, we can just just go in there, finish them off. We get the guns. What do you say? Now, obviously, they are not very happy about this answer. So they give Robert an Indian burn and also a wet willy. Robert says, please stop. But instead, Elaine shoots him in the head. Not sponge worthy. So they're going, what the fuck do we do now? They sold the guns to the Fireflies. How are we supposed to get these guns back? I guess we could try to explain it to them. And Joel's like, they're not going to understand, Elaine. And then, as they are mid-argument, a <laughs> lady walks out from behind the alleyway. I've been listening for quite a while. Even though I have been shot and I am losing a lot of blood just standing here. There you go. Queen Firefly. This... Queen Firefly, her name is Marlene, and she goes, where's Robert? I love Robert. You didn't do anything to him, did you? Especially not his good bowling arm. <laughs> oh my God, there he is. No! She is furious. She I, loved him. I needed them alive for that bowling game next Friday. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll tell you something. He sold you a bunch of guns, and they weren't yours. Give them back, please. And she says no. And Tess says yes. And then Marlene goes, how about this? You do a job for me and I will give you the guns. And then Joel and Tess are like reluctantly they look at each other. Yeah, okay, what is it? What's the job? I need something smuggled out of the city. You do that? I'll give you your guns back. I want to see those guns. Follow me. Okay, so we're following Marlene. Marlene leads us to the roof of a building and she goes, ah, over there, that's the headquarters of the Firefly. But just as we're about to make our way over, boom, explosion, that ain't good. The headquarters of the Fireflies has just been destroyed. What caused this? Well, as you saw earlier, the military had this area under their control Then the Fireflies did an explosion. So the military went, where's Fireflies HQ? We're also going to do an explosion. Well, Marlene is there and she is jumping, climbing things, moving big heavy doors, even though she was just shot. And she opens the door and she falls down. I've fallen. Suddenly, new character. Fuck away from me. Introducing Ellie. I know that one. She's on the box art. So this is Ellie and she is one tough customer. Marlene starts negotiating. She says, look. There's a crew of fireflies that'll meet you at the Capitol building. You hand her off, come back, the weapons are yours. We're smuggling her. Joel and Tess, they're a bit reluctant about it, but they eventually they agree. But I tell you what, Joel says, I don't like this Ellie chick very much. She really gets on my nerves. I don't see us building any kind of relationship, especially not over the long term. So off we go with smuggling to get this kid out of the city. But we're going to have to do it in the cover of night when it's nice and dark, right? So we haul up in an apartment building. Once he walks through the door of the apartment, he says to Ellie, I know you seem just like my dead daughter, but my heart won't melt, and we will definitely not be friends. Now Joel closes his eyes, and he falls asleep on the couch. Chapter 333 three. Joel suddenly wakes up. Oh my god, what happened to the sun? He gets up, and there's Ellie, and she's looking out the window wistfully. She goes, you know, I've never been outside the city. In my many years, I don't know what it's like to be on the outside. Then, suddenly, Newman walks in. All right, here's the update, says Elaine. I'm back from taking care of Marlene. She's fine. She's not dead. In fact, you know what? She's better than before she was even shot. That bullet actually dislodged another bullet that was already inside of her. Anyway, they go, right, time to smuggle that kid. So they leave the apartment and go down an elevator. She said there's some fireflies that have traveled all the way from another city. The girl must be important. So they get outside and they're sneaking through the streets. Joel decides to take a shortcut through a truck. But once he walks out the back door, now, these two soldiers, they saw them coming. They immediately apprehend the three and force them onto their knees. Elaine, Joel, and Ellie are basically at the soldiers' mercy, right? 
Tiss tries to bribe the soldiers. If it make this worth your while. But they're like, shit it, shit it. They scan her for COVID. Ah, looks good. Then they scan Joel. Yes, you have also passed. But then they go to scan Ellie, and Ellie kind of panics. <laughs> Joel jumps up and tackles the man. And then Tess turns around and she shoots the other guard in the head. I hate those rapid antigen tests. I hate how it feels up my nose. Get it away from me. <laughs> she then walks over to the directional microphone. Oh my god. Infecto. They suddenly think, well, this is just a big setup then. Because why would we smuggle someone who's infected? Was she trying to get us killed? Yup, that's the thing that makes the most sense, right? Okay, let's kill that girl right now. But Ellie reposts. I'm not infected. Ellie shows the bite mark on her arm and goes, It's three weeks old. Joel and Marlene are not very convinced. But, you know, she more fervently keeps pointing at the mark on her arm. But then suddenly, an unscheduled Uber comes. Backup is on their way. We gotta get out of here, Joel. And so, the three of them, as a team, they run, run into the night. They run underground into a sewage system. Down there, it's very icky and gross, and they've got turds all in their shoes, but they ignore that for now. Eventually, they get out to safety, and they stop for a moment, and they go, Ali, you really should have told us. Why did you surprise us with being infected? Well, look, because I am immune, they thought they would be able to make a vaccine out of me, and they would put me in a giant blender. And then they would squirt a little bit into everybody's open waiting mouths. And the whole world would be cured. Joel goes, yeah, we've heard that one before. I've been around for long enough to know that there is no cure. But Tess goes, hold on a minute, Joel. Joel's like, I don't believe it. You can't believe it. I think I believe it. And Ellie walks past him and she's like, well, you should start believing it because it's true. The conversation ends there and they carry on. So they head into one of these empty buildings and they try to open one of the office doors. But it's locked. So Joel and Elaine both start pushing at it with all their strength, and it works. That is very loud, and it awakens a clicker. Now, clicker is a person who has been infected for a very long time, and the cordyceps grow down all over their face. Now, because it does that, it impairs their vision. So from then on, they see using echolocation. But you know, if that happened to me, I'll pop over to my local barber and I would go short back and sides, please. And then you put a flat cap on top, bubbly boop. So Joel gets grabbed. Oh no, it's got to fight him off. Quick Joel, press the square button. And he does just in time. Then Tess shows up and she says, Looks like the toad stool just got toad schooled. <laughs> Joel suddenly turns to Tess and goes, By the way, I don't know if you know this, Elaine, but ever since my daughter died, I've been distracting myself with the hobby of golf. So this caddy is going to be following us around for the rest of the game. Just pretend like he's not here. So we go into an old museum and there's a whole bunch of old stuff from the past. From the long, long ago. Oh my God, it's three Hitlers. They make it outside and onto the roof. And there they find the best reoccurring character of them all. The Plank. So Joel's like, now watch your step as you're going out, because it's going to be a little... <laughs> it would have been so funny if she fell off there. <laughs> now, they sleep for a while, and in the morning, they run up to the Capitol building. This is their destination. We can hand over Ellie, and I'll never have to see that kid again. But when they open the door, uh-oh. So what they were expecting was a whole bunch of fireflies to go, surprise, good job bringing Ellie. We made a cake, hooray. But instead of that happening, everyone dead. I'm gonna go as far as to say, the fireflies should not have bombed that place at the beginning because now they're really reaping what they sowed, you know? <laughs> Ellie asks a pertinent question. What happens now? Because this was their destination, now they don't know where the hell to go. Oh God, I really don't want to adopt Ellie. Where are we supposed to drop this girl off? Well, maybe she could join us on our travels. You gotta think of it in golf terms, Tess. You see, we're on the ninth hole. We're right next to the clubhouse. You want to go straight from here to a par five? You're mad, Tess. And then Tess goes, I'm tired of your golfing analogies, Joel. It's always about the golf, isn't it? And I tell you what, my golfing days are over, Joel. What are you talking about? This is my last round, Joel. Tess has been bitten by one of the infected. She's the one who hides the bite from everyone. Oh my god, how long have you been like this? The caddy puts away the putter, like quietly in the background. This was three weeks. 
I was bitten an hour ago, and it's already worse. This is fucking real, Joel. Well, I don't believe it. Well, you should believe it. Listen, Joel, remember how you've got a brother? You've got to get this girl to Tommy's. She'll be safe there, at your brother's place. Go west. Go and find him. Save the world. So, they're currently in Boston. Tommy is all the way over in Wyoming, which means we have to get here to here, which is quite a long trip, to be honest. That's a 2,000 mile walk. Tess is looking wistfully out the window. A whole bunch of soldiers show up. I can find No, no, just go! Just fucking go. So Joel and Ellie, they go off together. And they're listening to the sound of gunfire between Tess and the soldiers. By the time we go to look at her again from the balcony, she is dead. So we sneak out the building and we go into the subway, but we're being chased. So they head off into the subway tunnel and it's full of spores. Now, Ellie, because she's immune, can just hang out in the spores, no problem. But Joel has to put on a mask. The guards enter the subway. Did you spot him? No, the place is empty. Ellie says, can you help me get across the water because- I can't swim. And Joel goes, ugh. And he helps her across the water. <gasps> that will be important later. Now, we get it out of that tunnel. Ellie tries to quite awkwardly broach the subject of the now dead Tess. About Tess. There's nothing you could say right now that would cheer me up, Ellie. There's only one thing that could make me feel better. Watch this swing. Chapter 4. four. Now, Joel changes the conversation from golf. He says, over there, there's a fella. He owes me some favors. He'll take us in. Maybe he'll adopt you. Maybe you'll end up with a new dad. Wouldn't that be great, Ellie? So they wander up a path and find Lincoln. Now, Lincoln is also known as Bill's Town. So they've gone from here to here. They've walked a total of five hours. The important thing about Bill's Town is that it's booby-trapped everywhere. So you have to be really careful when you walk around. Suddenly, we open one of the doors and we get trapped. So you're hanging upside down and you go to shoot all the zombies as they come at you. Ellie unhooks the chain, but oh no, you're being attacked by a zombie and then suddenly, man cuts its head off with the machete. <gasps> That's Bill. Let's go this way, Joel, says Bill. And they run into a building for safety and they slam the door behind them. Ellie says, oh, that was a close one. Thanks so much, Bill. Are you got any gamer subs around here? I'm kind of thirsty. Wow, these are the most heterosexual flavors I have ever seen. For reference, there are gay flavors of gamer subs and there are straight flavors of gamer subs. If you're straight, you may drink lemon limeade. Sour apple, that is also acceptable. If you are gay, you must drink strawberry or watermelon ice. We don't make the rules, fellas. So anyway, Ellie reaches out her hand. She goes, oh, it's so nice to meet you, Bill. My name is Ellie. But Bill's like, fucking whatever. And he handcuffs her to a pole. So you probably know from the HBO show, you find out that Bill has a secret. He is gay. Now, they keep it extremely subtle, so I think we should also be equally subtle about it. <laughs> Hi Joel, it's so wonderful to have you back in my house. Joel is completely unsuspecting. He is, oh, you know, we should watch the football later. Oh, maybe. I hope they have the behind the scenes in the showers. And Joel's like, you're right, that's always where they do the best commentary. Oh, Bill, <laughs> you're one of the manliest men I know. Bill kicks him in the knees, forcing him to the ground. I'm just checking for bite marks. It's standard procedure. Ah, I can see on the wall here, you've got a whole bunch of whips and paddles and handcuffs and such. Boy, Bill, you really are one tough interrogator. Now, while Bill is doing this, Ellie suddenly breaks the pipe. <laughs> Jesus, she's strong. And she starts swinging it at Bill. Ellie gets one hit on Bill before Joel grabs the pipe and stops her. So they're arguing and stuff, and they go, come on, come on now, let's stop arguing. Here's the thing. I need a car. Get me one of them driving vehicles. And Bill says, I guess I have a car. All right, let's do it. Let's go on a road trip. No, you don't understand. It doesn't work. You see, all the batteries in cars are dead, and so you won't be able to start it. All right, where do I find a new battery? Well, I guess you can go hunting around the houses. Perhaps we could do it together as a team, as a trio. And Bill goes, you know what, kid? You're all right. Ah, ah, yes, Bill. Oh, you're so incredibly straight. Anyway, they go running through all the apartments. They go into a cellar. Bill's getting a shotgun out of an old locker. How in the hell is Tess okay with this suicide mission? Actually, her idea. Really? 
Well, the broad's not as smart as I thought she was. What? Uh, fuck her. <sighs> now, Joel doesn't tell Bill that Tess is dead. So we fight our way through till we get to the high school. Now, here we discover a new type of infected known as a bloater. This is essentially a person who has lots of nutrition and lots of spores and they become just a big walking fungal mass. They are extremely strong. Together the trio are able to destroy it. And then they go running out of the high school. Even though they don't have a note. And then they break into some abandoned house, right? Where was the battery? You said there was going to be a battery there. You may be heterosexual, Bill. But that doesn't mean you can lie about where batteries are. And then Bill's like, shut up a second. In the room, we see suddenly a hanging body. This makes Bill quiet because he knows this person. And Joel's like, who's this? That was my partner. Part, 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 part. They were gay lovers. And then Joel's like, How are you guys lovers? That doesn't make any sense. This is a dude. And Joel just doesn't get it. He just doesn't understand. Ellie, in the meanwhile, I'm gonna go find a car. So she goes off and she finds a car, which is like within our own peripheral vision. She's jumping in the front seat, she's honking the horn. Look what I found, ah. Ah, I bet you get a lot of ladies in the back seat of this one, huh, Bill? <laughs> There's still some juice in it. Bill says to Ellie, hop out, you're not old enough to drive. I'm gonna get in the driver's seat. But then, when he tries to start the car. Battery's drained, but cells are alive. Meaning? Meaning, we push it, get it started, and the alternator will recharge the battery. So they open the garage door, and they start pushing the car. And eventually they start the car properly. And they go, oh, quick, we got to jump in the back. Hooray, we got it working. At this point, Bill decides, you know what, I'm going to go my own way. And Joel's like, ah, oh, that's typical Bill. You can't tie that man down. Bill goes, this red jewel. And get the fuck out of my town. So they part ways and it's very emotional. Also, I just wanted to make things awkward. Tess is dead. Oh, wow. Anyway, I just wanted to make you feel bad. Goodbye. So off they go, a driving. Ellie is supposed to be in the back seat sleeping. Joel is trying not to drift off to sleep as he is driving. And then she whips out a magazine. It's got some interesting photos. <laughs> Ellie, that ain't for kids. Whoa. How, how the hell would he even walk around with that thing? Get rid of that. Well, hold just... your horses. I want to see what all the fuss is about. Oh. Why are these all stuck together? Anyway, Ellie then jumps into the front seat and uh, she turns up the muted music. And I tell you why, <laughs> because it is extremely copyright. Ellie falls asleep. A lot of time has passed. We see that Joel and Ellie are approaching a literal fork in the road. There is an off ramp to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, or keep going along the highway. What's the best route? Ah, uh, you know what? Fuck it. It's time to take a break in the big pit. Now, Joel is getting a little suspicious. He thinks uh, we're kind of getting cornered in here. Maybe there's an ambush around the corner. Suddenly, man steps out onto the road. The guy's like, oh, I need help. I need help. And Joel's like, put your seatbelt on. I'm going to run this guy in. And he's like, don't you think he needs help? Joel knows an ambush when he sees it. So he starts accelerating. The man who's pretending to be hurt suddenly opens fire. And then a bus comes out of fucking nowhere and T-bones their truck. They go sailing into the front door of a bodega. Cut to black. They wake up a few seconds later. Shit, shit. What happened? They're both trying to get unbuckled, but then this dude shows up and he grabs Ellie and he pulls her out of the car. And then Joel is grabbed by another dude and he's taken over to a big piece of broken glass. No, Joel. Use your neck strength. Joel manages to pull a wicked sick 180 and he kills the dude with the same piece of glass. Ellie then bites this dude and then she gets struck in the face. Joel shows up and he smashes this guy into a boot. Don't touch my surrogate daughter. So they're trying to get all their stuff and they're trying to get out of there. They're being shot at. Oh my God. More action. Then they go into a big theater building. This dude shows up and he kicks Joel. Joel then falls into the water and the man jumps down into the water and he starts strangulating him. Now, Joel couldn't reach the gun to shoot the guy, but Ellie reached down and shot the guy and she blasted him right in the head. This is the first time Ellie has killed a dude. Joel and Ellie start having a bit of an argument. Ellie is like, I'm old enough to shoot guns. And Joel is like, no kid, you're too young to shoot guns. And Ellie gets mad. So they carry on. I hope there's no one up the ladder this time. Third time, all clear. Chapter five, five, five. 
So Joel and Ellie make their way up to the top of the building and they can see a vast view of the area. I'm gonna jump down there and I'm gonna clear us a path. What about me? You stay here. This is so stupid. We'd have more of a fucking chance if you let me help. I am. And Joel finally relents. Ah, here you go, kid. Have a rifle. There's a fight. And Ellie helps by being a sniper. Ah, Joel is using his witcher sense. Hey, Joel. You gotta consume four potions and eat three chicken breasts. Anyway, they kill them all. Now, they take cover and they see civilians being gunned down by hunters in a Humvee. The hunters loot the corpses then and they drive off. Seems as though there are alpha predators out here in the city. They must avoid the Humvee and try to escape the city now. And then eventually Ellie and Joel climb through a window and into a building. But then... Behind Joel is a man and he starts choking Joel out. Ellie goes to help Joel but gets knocked back. Eventually Joel gets the upper hand. <laughs> Leave him alone. The man on the ground says, Man, you hit hard. And Joel goes, Man, well, I was trying to kill you. I thought you were one of them. You know, one of those people in the Humvee. But then I saw that kid. And I'm like, they don't have kids. Anyway, my name's Henry. And uh, the young boy who just appeared in the scene suddenly is Sam. Joel asks, How many are with you? They're all dead. Hey, we don't know that. They're all dead. Hey, there were a bunch of us. Someone had the brilliant idea of entering the city, look for supplies. Now it's all about getting out of this shithole. Well, let's help you get out of here then. You know, safety in numbers. Sam and Henry are like, yeah, but Joel's like, I don't know. We already have enough people in this group, Ellie. Wait. Me, you, and the caddy. Mm -hmm. Henry says, We gotta hide out not too far from here. Be safer if we chat there. All right, so the four of them are now a wonderful team. Along the way, they have to go to a toy store and Sam picks up a toy and Henry scolds it because What's the rule about taking stuff? It weighs like nothing. The rule, what is it? We only take what we have to. He strikes Sam across the face. Sam says, okay, and puts the toy back down. So the group make it back to Henry and Sam's hideout, which is in an old office space. Ellie asks Sam, How long have you guys been holed up in here? A few days. We found a bit of food, though. Here. Blueberries. Found a whole stash of them. You want some? Ah, no thanks, Henry. I <laughs> never eat anything blue. Red, red only. Joel says to Henry, Henry, why haven't you left yet? Why are you just hanging around here in this old squalor? Been waiting for the right opportunity. And? Check this out. And they look out and they see the opening to the bridge that leads to the outside of town. And Henry says, Every day they congregate down there, guarding that damn bridge. Come nighttime, it's down to a skeleton crew. After sunset, that's our window. Most of them gone, sneak right past them. Henry then notices Ellie and Sam on the couch and they're throwing blueberries into each other's mouths. It's been a while since that boy even cracked a smile. He's not allowed to smile, you know. So where were you heading? <coughs> Heard the fireflies are based in the west somewhere. We're gonna join up with them. Something funny? Oh, it just seems like there's a lot of people putting their stock on the fireflies these days. Yeah, maybe there's a reason for that. So you don't know where they are, and you're just gonna drag him across the country to find them. I tell you what. How about I worry about my brother, you worry about your girl. All right, well, listen, I'm also looking for the fireflies, see? Have a look at this. And Henry then pulls out a big map. This is us. There's an abandoned military radio station just outside the city. You and your girl, you want to join us. It goes down tonight. You got it, boss. We'll be there, uh, toot sweet. They get some sleep, and we cut to a short time later. It is now nighttime, and Ellie wakes Joel up. Joel? <laughs> It's time to go. So they begin to move out. So they head towards the bridge. They kill all the hunters and they make it past the checkpoint. But as they open these large metal doors, uh-oh, the Humvee pulls up. Why are you running? They quickly run through the door, through to the other side, barring it behind them as they go. But the Humvee is hot on their tail. Sam and Henry, they climb a truck. <laughs> Come on. Then Joel lifts Ellie, but as he does, the ladder breaks off. <laughs> Ellie's like, we gotta go grab him. And Henry's like, I'm sorry, we're leaving. What? 
So Henry and Sam run off, but Ellie is loyal to the end. So she jumps back down. Oh, Joel. Suddenly the Humvee bursts through the gate. Joel makes it underneath the roller door just as the Humvee opens fire. <sighs> they made it. Joel and Ellie are now in an old bar. Now they take out the Humvees and they leave the bar. And once outside, they can see, oh, the bridge. But the Humvee bursts through the second barrier. Joel and Ellie then sprint as fast as they can towards the bridge. But the Humvee is hot on their tails. And they finally make it to the middle of the bridge. But it's been blown out. Oh no, they can't get across. Joel, we have to jump. We can't do it, it's too much of a risk. There's no time, Joel. And then she does a wicked cool dive bomb. Joel runs after her. Chris Bloosh. So, they survive the fall, but they're being dragged by the river. They manage to find each other in the river. Joel goes, hold my hand, Ellie. Joel manages to grab Ellie, but then a big current sends them sailing into a big rock cut to black. Chapter six, six, six. Joel wakes up on a beach and Ellie and Sam are standing over him. Joel, we did it, we're alive. So Henry then walks over saying, he's good, everything's fine. Joel then gets up, he's powerful mad, and he pushes Henry to the ground, taking Henry's gun from his hand and pointing it at him. Ah, yeah. oh, you left me to die out there, did you? If it was the other way around, would you have come back for us? Joel throws his gun to the ground and Henry gets back to his feet and they have decided to continue on together as a reluctant team. Henry then says, Listen, that radio tower is on the other side of this cliff. So it's going to be full of supplies. You're going to be glad you didn't kill me, all right? So they get to this like emptied out suburb and they're trying to navigate their way through to get to the radio tower. Now along the way there is a sniper who was perched at a house that is kind of right on a hill and so they have to sneak past the sniper. Come on caddy don't just be standing around. No, the caddy has been shot. What a turn of events. Eventually, they sneak their way over to the house and they kill the sniper. But uh oh, Joel, now it's time for you to become the sniper because that Humvee is back. And this time it's driving through the suburbs. Is the Humvee the main antagonist of this game? <laughs> for a while, yeah. <laughs> and oh my God, it looks like they're gonna get grabbed by the zombies, but Joel shoots most of them. And eventually Joel takes down the Humvee. Now that sends all the zombies running. So they go to the backyard, they leave out a hole in the fence, and off they go. Yo, is that the plank again? And you can see the radio tower just in the distance. They set up camp at the top of the radio tower, and they're having a bit of downtime, bit of R&R. &R. So Ellie comes in and has a chat with Sam. Sam starts asking questions about being a zombie. Hmm, kind of suspicious. Anyway, Ellie gives Sam the toy from the toy store to try and cheer him up. Come on, Sam, look at this thing. But Sam is not in a mood to play with transmorgras because he has secretly been bitten by the zombie. Ellie doesn't see it. Yes, it is my secret, says Sam. And everyone goes to sleep. We cut to the next morning. Ellie is sleeping very comfortably on the floor. There is Henry. Blueberries. He is stirring a pot of delicious cooked canned peaches with a few blueberries <laughs> sprinkled on the top. So Henry's like, oh, I let Sam sleep in. Why don't you go fetch him, Ellie? Go on. So off Ellie goes. She opens the door and uh-oh, Sam's just kind of standing there. Sam then tackles Ellie into the other room and she's screaming for help. Oh, Joel, help me. Joel quickly runs to grab the gun from his backpack. But Henry's like, I don't think so, Tim. That's my fucking brother. <laughs> Screw it. <laughs> Henry then shoots Sam and then he fires the gun again. But this time, he's in front of it. This is terrible timing, Sandra. They just released the new blueberry flavor of Gamer Sups. Henry loved blueberries. No! In keeping with the tone, let's lighten the mood with a little emotional damage. Or perhaps dragon fruit punch. <laughs> and thus ends the small through line of Sam and Henry. Cut to black. Chapter seven. seven. 
the word fall comes onto the screen. That is very ominous. Uh Uh-oh. So, the scene opens to a forest, and Joel and Ellie are walking into frame. Ellie reads a nearby sign. It says, Jackson County. So, Joel says, Ah, should only be a few more miles. And the caddy's back. There's a new one. He says, Oh, that's great, Joel. Boy, are my legs tired. Now, Ellie asks, We're gonna go see Tommy. Aren't you excited? Look, a hydroelectric power station. So, they cross the river and they head towards that facility. Now, as they try to open the gate, people pop up on the watchtowers on the other side and they've got guns. A woman then says, Joel, don't even think about reaching for your gun. And also, so Ellie, put down yours. Ah, oh, come on, Ellie. We gotta do as I say. So they both put their guns away, and the lady says, "Are you guys lost or something?" Uh, well, we actually didn't know this place was occupied. We were just gonna make our way through. Then suddenly, a male voice says, "They're all right." You know these people? Yeah, I know him. Suddenly, the gate opens, and it reveals a man. And what a man! It is my goddamn brother, Tommy. Tommy and Joel begin hugging, and maybe more. You're fucking old. Well, it's not my fault. Time passed and my daughter died. Are you still talking like that? Ah, I'll never give it up. Look, this is Maria. She runs all sorts of stuff around here. Also, you're my brother-in-law. What? So Tommy got married to Maria. Anyway, Maria asks Ellie. Oh, what brings you through here? I was eating blueberries and I got lost. I wasn't looking at the road. So Tommy and Maria then invite Ellie and Joel in for some food. The adults continue talking. And as they're walking around, Maria gets radioed. And the radio says, We're about to start the plant back up. Do you want to come check it out? Tommy goes, I'll go, I'll go. So he goes running off. Ah, Tommy, I'll go with you. Uh, Ali, you stay with Maria. Off Joel and Tommy go down to the turbine. And on the way, Tommy says, I have something for you, Joel. I went back all the way to Texas. Most of our stuff was long gone, but here. And then Tommy hands Joel a photo of him and Sarah. I don't want to look at this, see? And he browses it for a minute. This doesn't look real. Is it a deep fake? I don't want this photo. Get it away from me. I hate you. Well, I'm going to hold on to it for you then. Tommy, I need to talk to you privately. Sure. Let me just go check on my guys real quick. So they go over to the turbine room, and the workers actually manage to get the whole thing going. Joel and Tommy then go into Tommy's office. And Tommy goes, Joel, why'd you leave Boston? Well, I've been there for quite a while, little brother. I've had quite the adventure, but it's time to move on. I reckon you left because of something to do with that girl that's with you. I'll tell you, Tommy, you're right. It's got everything to do with that young girl. You see, she's immune. Dun, dun, dun. Immune? Come on. What are you talking about? I know I've seen her breathe enough spores to take down a dozen men. And nothing. Now, I wouldn't have believed it neither, but I can show you. Why bring her here then? Well, I'm supposed to deliver her to the fireflies, see? Has the caddy been here the whole time? Get out of here. Here's a deal, Timmy. You take this girl, I go off solo, and you hand her into the fireflies. You can keep all the reward money. I haven't seen a firefly in years. Uh Uh-oh. But you know where they are, don't you? What makes you think we'd be willing to take on a responsibility that big? We don't owe you anything. Don't do it for me. Do it for my dead daughter. You know, this one. I can't remember her name. I am reluctant. I will not help. Oh, go on, please. No. I've settled down now, and this idea is way too risky. I don't like it. Oh, for God's sake, have some of your friends do it then. Just take the damn girl off my hands, will ya? They have families too, Joel. Joel pushes Tommy into a wall and he says, For God's sake, Tommy, I got the bloody cure to mankind and you're not gonna help me. We're gonna have some sibling rivalry. Is that really what we're gonna do? We're not back in Boston, Joel. You lay your hands on me again and it won't end well for you. Suddenly, a noise behind them. Wait, we're under attack. Anyway, Tommy, go and kill all the attackers. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. About like an hour later, right? Ellie overheard some of this conversation. She's like, you don't want me anymore? Fine, I'm I'm running away. And Tommy's like, she went that way. Come on, let's go get her. So they ride their horses over to a house. Ah, Ellie, I was just joking about abandoning you. Ha 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 ha, it's a funny joke, right, Tommy? They say some very emotional stuff. What? Maria told me about Sarah. Ellie? And- You are treading on some mighty thin ice here. Everyone I have cared for has either died or left me. Everyone fucking except for you. So don't tell me that I would be safer with someone else because the truth is I would just be more scared. 
Then Tommy bursts into the room. Get it together, dummies. We aren't alone. And Tommy and Joel and Ellie and uh, Caddy and also Sam's back for some reason. And they're loading their guns and they're ready for the fight of their lives. And the Humvee bursts in and the machine guns start spraying. The bandits show up, they kill all the bandits, and then they ride back to camp. Tommy is basically ready to take Ellie off Joel's hands, and he's like, there'll be kids watching movies and stuff tonight. We got Shrek too. You're gonna love it. Joel changes his mind. He's had a bunch of thinking to do. He's had some time to ruminate. And so he has decided, you know what? This Ellie kid, she's all right. Come on, Slick, we're a team. Ellie turns to me, you really mean it? And he goes, I do. He hands her a gun. I've already got one of these. He just keeps handing her guns. I trust you, kid. I can't hold these anymore, Joel. <laughs> it is now established that they're going to be setting off on their own trail. It'll be great. Cut to black. Chapter 8. Some time passes, and Joel and Ellie have traveled from here to here. We are now at the gates of the Eastern University of Colorado. And Joel and Ellie make their way through the science building. Now, this place is really interesting, because as they wander around, they pick up a bunch of tapes. And on the tapes, they talk about research that's being done with this virus slash fungus thing. But that's all coming later. Now, Ellie says, hey, by the way, Joel, when I was a kid, I used to want to be an astronaut. You know, in the before times. But Joel, what did you want to be? Well, when I was a kid, I used to want to be uh, a singer. <laughs> and a barbershop quartet. Oh, you managed to give us a quick dirty, would you? <laughs> Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my fungus gal. So they run around the campus for a while, running into infected, until they find a science building. They make their way inside the building. Now, they thought the fireflies would be here and doing active research on a vaccine. However, the place is completely abandoned. Uh-oh, that's not generally a good sign. So, in one of the offices, they find a corpse, and it has a tape recorder on it. It says... They're looking for the fireflies. They've all left. Yeah, no shit. I'm dead. Or I will be soon. Got me some time to reflect. I'm over here stroking my dick. I got lotion on my dick. Come on. Looking for the others. They've all returned to St. Mary's Hospital in Salt Lake City. You'll find them there. Now, Ellie asks if Joel knows where that is. I know the city, and it isn't very close by. Anyway, Joel and Ellie then look out a window, and they see a torch shining in. Joel says to Ellie, get down, just as a shot pierces through the glass. Joel and Ellie begin escaping the attackers and all sorts of stuff. But just as Joel is coming through a door and goes to open it, a man kicks it open, surprising Joel, and then he pushes him against a balcony rail. Joel fights the man, eventually getting free, and then punching the man in the face. And the railing breaks, and Joel falls onto a big piece of rebar sticking out of the ground. Ellie rushes down and helps to pull Joel off of the rebar. Joel! Ellie and Joel try to retreat, hobbling towards their horses. But Joel is not in very good shape. He collapses in front of the building, forcing Ellie to kill the remaining attackers on her own. Joel and Ellie manage to get away, and they're trying to find a place to lay low. And Ellie's like, I think we're safe now. I think we got away. But Joel's like, I don't feel so good, kid. Cut to black. Winter. Chapter 9. Some time passes, and we are now in a snowy forest. We see a rabbit coming out of a rabbit warren. It's the cutest thing I've ever oh, seen. Oh, look. It is immediately struck in the neck by an arrow. <laughs> Ellie walks over to it, and the caddies at the background go, oh, Excellent shot, madam. Ellie then attaches it to the horse. She Tim Ellen grunts. Uh? Look, there's a deer nearby. Ellie then leaves the horse to pursue the deer on foot. Ellie shoots the deer, and then she chases it, and then she shoots it again, but then she has to chase it again, and then she shoots it again, and it's now dead. Now, Ellie is inspecting her kill, when suddenly, some rustling from the bushes. Ellie turns around, bow drawn, and says, come out of there. Suddenly, two men show up from behind a tree. We just want to talk. Ellie says, no sudden move. Or I'll kill you. Listen, my name is David, and this here's my friend James. David then says, uh, we're actually from a larger group. We got lots of women and children, and they're all very, very hungry. Well, I'm also a woman and children, and I'm very hungry too. Maybe we could, uh, trade you for some of that meat there. What do you need? Weapons? Ammo? Clothes? Medicine! Any antibiotics? Back at the camp. 
Come on, kid, let's go. We got a puppy, we got candy. Come on, jump in the van, kid. I'm not following you anywhere. Buddy boy can go get it. He comes back with what I need. The deer is all yours. But if anyone else shows up, I'll kill you. But David then turns to his friend. He says, all right, and he goes off to grab it. Ellie then takes David's rifle, and David says, Probably gonna be a while. Mind if we take some shelter from the cold? Okay, but bring him with us. Pointing to the deer, right? David picks up the deer and he starts tracking. We then cut to a little while later and we are at a campfire. Ellie and David have set up this campfire in an abandoned sawmill. David says to Ellie, You know, you really shouldn't be out here all on your own. I don't like company. I see. What's your name? But Ellie does not give it. Suddenly, click, 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 click. Oh my God, it's the zombies. They're back. And then David pulls out his gun and he starts shooting it. And Ellie's like, what the fuck? You had another gun. Yeah, sorry. I should have told you about that. But see, I wasn't going to kill you after all. I could have killed you so easily. Can I have my rifle back now? No. Then a big horde of zombies comes along and they fight them off together as a team. You know what? This David guy doesn't seem so bad. They successfully fight off the zombies. You handled yourself pretty good back there, kid. I'd say we make a pretty good team. We got lucky, that's all. There's no such thing as luck. I believe everything happens for a reason. A few weeks back, I sent a group of men out a nearby town to look for food. Only a few came back. They said that the others had been uh, slaughtered by a crazy man. And get this, he's a crazy man traveling a little girl. Uh-oh. They kind of talk vaguely here, but what he's saying is that we know who you are. You killed some of our men, and we're basically here to get you. Or at least to kill that man you were with. Ellie starts getting up, and she grabs the rifle, aiming it at David's head. Don't get upset. The camera then pans, and we can see James is back. David says, lower the gun. James says, no way, David, I'm not gonna let her go. Come on, lower the gun. James then lowers his gun. And David says, now give her the medicine. James throws the medicine at her. Ellie then grabs the medicine and heads back up towards the door. You won't survive long out there. I can't protect you. Oh, thanks. And Ellie leaves. She runs back to her horse and then returns to the hideout, but she doesn't know that she is being tracked. So Ellie makes it back to the house and it's actually a big lakeside resort. Ellie races up to Joel and he's there in a basement under a blanket. He's still very weak. I have just the thing for you, Joel. <laughs> Here. Joel drinks the gamer subs. Ellie, you did get the free samples, right? You didn't pay for them, right? You just got the free samples? Joel, I wanted to buy more because they were so generous. Oh, Ellie, that's how they get you. Ellie pulls away the blanket to reveal stitching where he was stabbed with that rebar, right? And she gives him some penicillin and then she puts the blanket back over him. Then she lays down beside him and goes to sleep. Chapter 10. When Ellie wakes up in the morning, she can hear something outside. So she hops up and she checks the window and she can see that David's men are outside searching the resort. Ellie leans down next to Joel and says, Joel, I'm going to lead them away from here. I'll be back for you, Joel. Go get him, Ellie. Ellie then leaves the house and hops on the horse. Now, Ellie is watching a group of men, but she doesn't say, oh no, on her left, there's another man right there. And he grabs her. And as she quickly turns around, she stabs him in the throat. Oh, 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 and she kills him. So all the men are now alert as she sprints away on horseback. She's riding the horse, she's riding, she's riding. It's like, oh, my legs are so tired. And Ellie's like, come on, you can do it. Keep going. We need all your horsepower. But then, uh-oh, she has fallen off the horse and she lands heavily on some snow. But she's not done yet. She quickly scrambles to her feet. Ellie then quietly sneaks around. She's picking off the men one by one. As she's about to leave the area, David comes up behind her, starts strangling her, no, and knocks Nelly. her out. We cut to black. Chapter 11. Ellie suddenly wakes up. <gasps> Despite all of her rage, she is inside of a cage. There's a man in front of her, chopping up body parts on a workbench. And it is not very sanitary. The man turns and sees that Ellie is awake. Ah, I'd better go get David. David comes into the room, right? And he's like, how are you doing, Ellie? Rrr, I'm evil. Then David slides some risotto underneath the cage door. I know you're hungry. What is it? It's deer. Is it, though? Says Ellie. <laughs> She's just eating it. It's awfully quick to judgment. Considering you and your friend killed how many men? They didn't give us a choice. You kill to survive, and so do we. 
So now what? You gonna chop me up into tiny pieces? I'd rather not, says David, emphatically. Please, tell me your name. Ellie then shoves a plate of food back at David and says, The rice to sauce ratio is bad. How rude. You know, Ellie, you should agree to join us. It's perhaps the one way that you can stay alive. It's the only way I'm gonna be able to convince the others that you can come around. You have heart. You're loyal. And you're special. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the and then she breaks one of his fingers. She grabs the keys on his belt. David grabs Ellie's arm and he pulls her and smashes her into the cell a whole bunch of times. It's very violent. Ellie drops the keys and David picks them back up. You are very dumb. What am I supposed to tell the others now? I'm going to kill you and we're going to cut you up into tiny pieces. See you in the morning, Ellie. David Lee. We cut back to Joel. Joel wakes up. He crawls out of bed and he's like, Ellie, where are you, Ellie? You are my daughter now, Ellie. I can't even remember the first daughter's name. Joel then grabs his backpack and he moves out. He goes, you know what? I'm feeling a lot better now. Joel then goes outside and David's men are still there and they start attacking him. Look out, says the caddy. Another man suddenly comes around the corner with a knife, ready to kill Joel. Joel turns around and fly kicks the man. Joel then smashes the man into a wall that knocks him out. Joel drags the two men back to the hideout and he then ties one to a chair. Is the girl alive? Uh, uh, girl? I don't know no girl. And so Joel stabs him in the leg. I remember now. She's alive. She's David's newest pet. Ah, where is she? In the town. Joel then takes the bloody knife from the man's leg and puts the hilt of it in his mouth. And he says, but you're going to mark it on the map. He does. He then smushes the man's head with a pipe. <coughs> We cut back to Ellie, and Ellie is sleeping, and she's like, oh. But then suddenly David shows up. He and another man come in and grab her. They carry her over to a table, and David raises the knife, and he's about to kill Ellie. But then she goes, there's a reason you don't want to kill me and eat me. I'm infected. And then she rolls up her sleeve. Also, she just bit him. Anyway, they're both going, oh my god, what does that mean? Uh-oh. And then Ellie goes, ah, time to... Attack! Ellie grabs the knife and swings it at James. Ellie runs out of the room. David starts shooting at her. Once outside the room, Ellie finds her own knife and then she jumps out a nearby window. <laughs> Ellie then begins searching for a gun and a way out of this town. But David is back and he grabs her and then he throws her back into the restaurant. So now it is a cat and mouse game. Ellie is hiding around the restaurant. She's sneaking around and stuff and David is on the hunt. David locks the door and he's searching for Ellie. Ellie's running around. She's sneaking up on David. She's stabbing him and stuff. And she does this a few times. And then they both fall back unconscious. Now we cut back to Joel and he is entering the town. We gotta get her, Joel. You gotta <laughs> fight for her. It's just like that time with your other daughter, remember? You can't let this one die. Joel's like, all right, well, it's time to go through the town and kill all the men then. And he does. That's the old restaurant. I bet they're having a boss fight in there. And it's like well on fire. Everything's real bad. We cut back to Ellie. Now she has just regained consciousness and David is still unconscious. Oh, thank God. Ellie's got the upper hand. Ellie sees David's machete on the ground and goes, I need to crawl towards it. But suddenly, just as she's about to grab the machete, Ellie's kicked in the ribs. <gasps> David woke up as well. You know, it's okay to give up. Ain't no shame in it. Ellie continues to crawl towards the machete because my name's Ellie. And that kind of rhymes with machete. Good enough, says Joel from outside the window with his face pressed against the glass. And then he kicks her in the ribs again. David then gets on top of Ellie, pinning her down. And he is starting to strangulate her. She grabs the machete. Ellie then rolls over and she starts slashing at David. Smashing him with the machete many, many times. Joel grabs her from behind. It's me, your dad. Joel? They then hold each other, and it's very sweet. Oh, baby girl. It's okay. We can get you a new machete. They then leave the restaurant together. Let's get out of here, Ellie. I saw a different Denny's on the way here, and it seemed much nicer. Chapter 12. Now, spring. Ellie is looking at the relief of a deer on the concrete wall. Joel calls to Ellie. Did you hear me? No. Hospital. This is where we get off. Alol and Joel head into Salt Lake City towards the hospital. We're looking around, we're going through buildings, we're solving some puzzles and stuff. Look at this, Alol! And then there's a giraffe. Oh my god! Wow! Then it wanders off. 
Joel then leans on a railing next to Ellie and he says, Is it everything you ever hoped for, kid? It's got its ups and downs. You can't deny the view, though. At this point, it feels like, oh, this might be the end of the story wrapping up, but it is not. So, just as Joel is about to open the door, he says to Ellie, We don't have to do this. After all we've been through. It can't be for nothing. All right, kid, let's go. And so they go through the door together. Now, they're carrying on, and Ellie hands Joel a photo of him and Sarah. Joel looks at the photo, and this time, he can stand to look at it. So, the implication is that he's managed to get over the grief. Hooray! Now, they carry on, and there's a whole bunch of infected, and they fight those. Finally, they get to a sort of waterway, right? And they're trying to cross the waterway. And Ellie's like, hey, you know, when this is all over, you can teach me how to swim. Now, just about to finish the water level, when all of a sudden, uh uh-oh, the bus comes free, and it starts going down the waterway. Ellie makes it to the other side, but Joel falls backwards into the bus and he's, he's grabbing onto the railing, but they're getting thrown around and stuff. And then the bus hits some debris. Now the force of this sends Ellie and Joel hurtling through the river and Joel is quick to regain his composure and he swims over. Oh my God, Ellie, no, she's unconscious. But he drags her out of the water and he puts her on the ground. But then a man in an army uniform sees this and says, don't do it, Joel. Stop squashing that girl. And he's going, It's CPR. I'm saving her life. I don't care if you listen to public radio, Joel. And then he hits Joel with the back of his gun. It cuts to black. We don't know what the fate of Ellie is. Maybe she just fucking drowned. What about the caddy? He did drown. Oh, no. I know. I know. Sorry, fellas. I'll always remember him. Chapter 13. Joel awakens in the hospital. He's like, "Uh uh-oh, uh-oh, what happened to Ellie? Guess who is there? Who? Marlene! Welcome to the Fireflies. Sorry about the, you know, concussion. They didn't know who you were. Why doesn't this saline drip have at least some Misfits melon in it or something? (laughs) We gave you the non-caffeine version, Joel. The caffeine's got you all crazy. That's not true, says Joel, as he begins opening fire. Ah, where's Ellie? I gotta save my new daughter. She's all right. They brought her back. Take me to her. You don't have to worry about her anymore. No, I'd like to see her, please. You can't see her. Ellie's being prepped for surgery. What the hell do you mean, surgery? The cordyceps, the growth inside her, has somehow mutated. It's why she's immune. Once they remove it, they'll be able to reverse engineer a vaccine. But it grows all over the brain. It it does grow all over the brain, so... Oh my god. Joel suddenly realizes that they're going to kill her on the operating table. (gasps) Oh my god. Find someone else. There is no one else. A guard kicks Joel in the back of the knees. Stop, Joel. There is no other choice here. Joel crosses his arms and he's like, yeah, whatever. Shut up, Marlene. March him out of here. He tries anything, shoot him. The soldier then aims his guard at Joel and he marches him out of the room. Now, while he's being marched out of the room, he can see his backpack. Now, at this point, he then backs up real fast and he turns the table on the guard. He then points his gun at the guard. He goes, tell me where the operating room is. And the guy's like, oh, top floor, the far end. Just don't shoot me. Joel then shoots him and takes his backpack. Now it's time for Joel to go on a warpath to end all warpaths and make it to the operating room before they take out Ellie's brain and start doing experiments on it. They'll probably put some athletes foot cream antifungal right there on the brain or you know do that thing with the baking soda and the vinegar and just turn her head into a volcano he makes it to the operating room have i made it just in time yes says the surgeon amazing timing don't come any closer ah but i am coming closer think of all the lives we'll save i'm going to save one life though joel then shoots the man in the head joel then picks up ellie and he runs out of the hospital and into the elevator down please he presses the button they get into the parking lot but marlene is there waiting marlene points her gun at joel and says you can't save her Even Even if you get her out of here, then what? How long before she's torn to pieces by a pack of clickers? That is, if she hasn't been raped and murdered first. That ain't for you to decide, Marlene. Marlene says, It's what she'd want, and you know it. Marlene lowers her gun, and she goes, You can still do the right thing here. The game then cuts. Joel is driving in a car 
down the road. And it's a little bit of a fake out because all of a sudden, Ellie wakes up in the back seat. Why aren't I in the hospital, Joel? What am I wearing? Joel! Let's take it easy. Drugs are still wearing off. What happened? Then we go to a flashback and we see that scene that cut earlier. There's Marlene walking towards Joel as if she's about to take Ellie. And then it cuts back to the car again. Joel goes, ah, well, Ellie, it turns out there are a lot more people like you. People that are immune, that is. It wouldn't have done any good to remove your brain and throw it around the room like an old jelly football. Now that, fellas, is a big lie. She's the only instance of an immune person that's ever been found. Now we cut back to the flashback again and we see Joel with the automatic gun shooting Marlene. Then we go back to the car again. Actually, kid, they've stopped searching for a cure altogether. Really? That's right, kid. And you know what? I'm taking us home. Home to Tommy. Okay. We then cut back to the flashback again, and it shows that Joel has shot Marlene, and Joel then puts Ellie in the back of the car, and then he walks back over uh, to Marlene, crawling through a half-mixed solution of black cherry caffeine-free. And she goes, Wait, please let me live, please. And Joel goes, You just come after her. Final chapter. So now they're on the side of the road. Ellie is looking at her bite mark. Joel is shutting the bonnet to the car and he walks over. Looks like we're walking. They round the corner and they could see that Tommy's camp is in the distance. We're about to live happily ever after. Ellie, do you have anything to say? Ellie goes, Back in Boston, back when I was bitten, I wasn't alone. My best friend was there and she got bit too. Her name was Riley and she was the first to die. And then it was Tess and then Sam. And then it was Tess and then Riley, and then Sam. Oh yeah, Tess and Sam. But listen, kid, none of that was any of your fault. You didn't do it. You don't understand. Allie has like a tear in her eye and she's like, Swear to me that everything that you've said about the fireflies is true. I swear. Okay. And that is the end of the game. Question mark? That is one of the best story told games that there is. It is very well done and paced. You gotta give it up for Neil Druckmann. Yup, you know what? He had that first game right. Now, everything in number two sucks. <laughs> Why is it called The Last of Us? Yeah, it's plenty of people. Why not, like, Joel and Ellie, colon, Redemption. Fungus Wars. <laughs> <laughs> the Mushropocalypse, how about? <laughs> Where do you think he got those blueberries? <laughs> Why did she say Joel like it's got three syllables in it? Joel? Joel? Be at the top of a Swiss mountain? Why are you saying it that way? It sounds like like a furry pretending to like howl. Yeah, she's just there at night time. There's a full moon and she's got Joel. <laughs> That's my signal. Ellie must be in trouble. Why did they pick blueberries? Why didn't they <laughs> say like Now, this is where I have a problem with the story. Mm -hmm. Because in The Last of Us Part 2, there's a point where she is making out with Dina. And yeah. she says, don't worry, I can't infect you. I can't get you infected if that's what you're worried about. But then she bites David and goes, well, now you're infected. Ha ha. And I think it's actually true. I think he is infected. So they just kind of retconned that. Either kissing does the infecting or biting doesn't. You can't have it both ways. Uh, yeah, so I'd give it. I'd give it a nine point eight. I nine kind of didn't like those diesel bits. I thought that mm. was a bit cheap. What, what about you, Your Majesty? Mm. What would you give it? On a scale from avoid it to have to platinum it, I would say I would firmly place it on a beat it. Rent, do not buy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, get gamer subs also. Free samples and a free sticker. They've got a new flavor, salt.